What's up, Jay here, and in this video, I thought I would do something completely different, something that nobody on YouTube has ever done before, and that is an unboxing video. In all seriousness, this is actually going to be an unboxing video, and I will be unboxing the ROG Strix Z370i gaming motherboard from ASUS. It is a mini ITX motherboard, as you can see from this tiny box and I am going to be using it in an upcoming build that I will be creating a video for. So you can look forward to that. But anyway, I know that the, uh, the whole Coffee Lake Z370 thing is kind of new to the scene, so I wanted to uh, do a quick unboxing because it's not always obvious, like even when you're looking at, uh, at Newegg, and you can see all the specifications for one of their ob their items. It's not it's not entirely obvious what everything uh, that's packaged with the with the item is, especially for motherboards. So I'm just gonna do a quick unboxing, take everything out, show you what it is, show you all the things that the thing has, and we will go from there. So I actually thought that this was one of the better looking or the best looking available mini ITX motherboard for Z370 on the market right now. So I went ahead and picked it up. Um, so as you first open it up, you come into this uh, box up top here. This actually contains the motherboard. Uh, as you can see, it is empty. That is because I have already taken the motherboard out and set it up and tested it to make sure that it works. But anyway, so here's the actual motherboard. Comes in the standard anti-static bag. And I'll actually move this back. Bring this box forward. And we can take this out. And have a look at it. I guess we can start at the bottom. We have the by 16 PCIe uh, slot. It's metal reinforced. I don't know if that's how that's picking up on the camera, but so you get extra sturdy. That's good. On the side, we have the regular USB 3.0 connector. Um, on this side of the RAM, we have the uh, two SATA ports. And then on the other side of the RAM, we have the other two SATA ports. Then we have our front panel connector pins, a uh, audio uh, pins on the inside of that. And then an add-on RGB header uh, connector here, which we will uh, get to in a second. And then your 24 power pin, obviously your two RAM slots. It carry it holds up to uh, 32 gig of DDR4, and I think it's overclockable to like 4333 or something. Uh, and then uh, let's go moving back in. We have the M.2 slot, at least one of them right here. The CPU slot. Uh, I think this is like a, a CMOS reset jumper here. And then on the bottom, we have a regular fan header. And next to that, I believe, is a, a USB 2.0 connection. And we have our rear I.O. here, as you can see, kind of right here between the uh, Wi-Fi piece and this shroud slash sheet sink is a, uh, an AIO pump header. And then up here, we have the CPU fan header. At the very top is your eight pin EPS connector. We'll go over the rear IO in a second. And finally, up here in the upper corner is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector. And real quick, before we get to the rear IO, on the back is a second M.2 two slots. So one of the M.2 slots is NVMe, uh, the other one is SATA only. Just worth noting. I think the front one's probably NVMe, because that's right in where the PCI lanes would be. And then the back one is likely the SATA only. So in the rear I.O. we have your standard audio outputs, inputs, outputs, a uh, optical out, which is cool, a uh, Wi-Fi connector for the included Wi-Fi antenna, a uh, Ethernet or Gigabit LAN, uh, two USB 3.1, a Display Port, HDMI port, four USB 2.0, and then one more USB 3.1 Type A and a USB Type C connector at the bottom, which is really neat. 
glad to see some, uh, some type C stuff coming in. So first, before I go through the contents of the box, there is one thing that I already have installed that it comes with. So I'm going to pop that off real quick and show you. So here we are going to take off the CPU retainer cover thingy and pop the CPU out. So this thing is a, uh, a CPU installation tool, and it's just this little metal plastic frame that you pop the, uh, the CPU into, and I guess it makes the installation easier. I'm not sure if you necessarily need it or if it's just to kind of make things easier, to make it easier to place the CPU down into the socket. It does kind of fit over the socket nicely. Um, I imagine you could use, you could go without it, but the, uh, I figured Asus included it. They probably included it for a reason, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So the first thing we have is a nice little cover deal. Don't really need that. Okay, and in today's day and age, apparently we still need CDs. Also, the manual. A little piece of paper. This thing shows you how to use the CPU installation tool, kind of. I still had to look it up online to make sure I knew what I was doing. Uh, I also have the CPU socket cover that I tossed inside there. We have a Wi-Fi antenna. This thing's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out of the bag and maybe kind of set it up. Um, so it actually comes with a base. It's like an external thing, so I'm not going to take that out, but base and then the uh, cable here, and it actually looks like it's probably a decent length. So you hook this up to the back here. This is your actual antenna. It can sit inside the base, and then you just set it somewhere where it'll get better reception than it would if it were just sticking out the back of your computer case. Next up is a cable for the uh, for some RGB lights, I guess. So one end hooks into that little uh, RGB header on the motherboard that I mentioned earlier. The other end looks like a normal fan connector. I'm assuming it's for uh, ASUS RGB lights, but I imagine it'll work with whatever uses that kind of connection. No. Next is a uh, two SATA cables, one straight, one with uh, straight on one end, one with the 90 on the other. We actually have two of those, so four cables total, two straight, two with one 90 degree end. We have some zip ties and some baggies, loose stuff. Uh, this one I took out of the bag because it was all bubble wrapped for some reason. It uh, looks like a little extender for the front panel pins. It's actually labeled, so you just pop one end on it, it's keyed, and then uh, the others are labeled power LED, uh, power switch, reset switch, hard disk drive light. So that's fun. And rear I.O. panel cover. Try to get that without too much glare on it. Then we have a few little baggies of things. I'll actually hold one of these up, see if I can get one that you can really see. Let me try to focus on this. So you got a couple of these little bags where they have these little metal pieces in them and a screw. And these are for, see here's a second one, then here's another little baggy, like a little standoff thing and another little screw. These are for uh, the M.2 slots. Um, they're adapters for using smaller M.2 drives or, uh, or the, uh, the actual screw down point for the other one, for the main one. And finally is a, included is this little sheet of uh, stickers. So that's kind of cool. I might do something with one of these like slap it to a uh, magnetic sheet and make myself a ASUS ROG sticker magnet thing. One more thing that I want to mention that kind of bugs the crap out of me about this. It's a very, very nice looking motherboard, yeah? Until you see this stupid little, this, this thing. 
the CMOS battery. What is that? It's got these ugly little cables sticking out and it's just kind of like taped on to the side, like two-sided tape just slapped on there. Like seriously, seriously, why? You couldn't have figured out a more elegant solution to that? I mean, that's just straight up ugly. Anyway, rants aside, I appreciate you for checking out the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, feel free to do the other thing. Uh, if you like the content stuff, videos that I'm putting out and you want to continue to see more, hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the, the, whole, the, whole, uh, the whole build video coming up. And I will see you in the next one.